Okay, so in the first video we set up our reference image, and uh, there's, here's pretty much where we left off. Uh, what I'm going to do is uh, I'm going to pick this guy, and I'm going to push it back off the grid, so we're, not mo we're going to model at the center of the grid, so we don't want our model to be sitting on top of our reference image. And the other thing I'm going to do is I'm going to come over here, and I'm going to click this icon over in the channel box, and that's going to create a layer, and it's going to put this image on it. And I'm going to call this thing reference underscore capital L for layer. Save it. And now you can see I can either turn that on or off to get it out of our way, or I can click this second box and make it a template, click it a second time, and it's now a reference, and I can't select a reference object. So now I can't accidentally select it. And then if you really want it to be proper, you should also call it something over here, reference image. Okay, so you know what's what. It's always a good idea to name your stuff. So now we're ready to start modeling something. All right, so let's come in here, and uh, once again, I use marking menus to get to things. Uh, if I hold the space key down, it brings up this marking menu, and this marking menu basically has all the tabs for all the tools for all the different categories that you can be in. Right now in polygons, you see these are all the polygon tool menus. If I go to uh, surfaces, you see these menus change. Right? If I go to dynamics, these menus change. So uh, I've gotten used to using the marking menus by holding the space key down. And this row right here represents all the polygon tools. This row right here is all the NURBS based tools. This row right here is all of the dynamics tools. So I have all of these different categories in one place when holding the space key down. So I'm not going to be going up here and picking things out of this menu because I think this is a better way to learn and it's faster. So uh, learn to use the marking menus. Uh, the second thing is that I also have a shelf up here. This is a custom shelf that I've created. And what I've done is uh, for tools that are either uh, I used so much from uh, this menu uh, that I don't want to have to open the menu up and search for them, I drag them up here. Or for tools that just aren't in the uh, marking menus, uh, I put them up here on this shelf. And for instance, I have things like freeze transforms, center the pivot, delete history, all of that is up here. Now, what I'll do for these things is anything that I, I use from this marking menu for the first time, I'll show you where you can find it in these menus. Uh, but then from that point on, I'm just going to start clicking these things and leave it uh, to you to remember where they're at. All right? So uh, let's get started by creating our uh, cylinder that this thing is based on here, right? So I can go to holding the space bar down, create, polygon primitive cylinder, which you can also get to in the polygons menu by going to edit mesh, or I'm sorry, mesh. I'm sorry, no, it is, it is uh, create, <laughs> polygon primitive, and then go to cylinder, okay? So you can see how much faster it is just to do space bar create, polygon cylinder. Now I have interactive creation on, which was recently added in, in Maya. Uh, so if I pick that, I actually draw the first the shape of the cylinder out, and then I drag the height out like that. And I have my cylinder set by default to be 6. Uh, I believe uh, the default settings for yours will probably be higher. I like to keep it at 6 because that's sort of the minimum shape that I can get away with when I smooth and it will actually look rounded from a distance. Now <clears throat> uh, for this tutorial I'm going to take this and I'm going to drag it up to about 12. Now the way I did that is I select the label and then I come into this display area here and I hold the middle mouse button down and you can see it changes to the little left right arrow and I can drag it left or right to change the number of subdivisions and I'm going to set this up to, to like 12. Uh, the reason for that is if I don't want to smooth this from back here, uh, that'll look more cylindrical than something with six sides. Okay. Now the next thing is I don't need these end cap divisions. So I'm going to come down here and say subdivision end caps, and I'm going to change that to zero, and you see all those edges go away. All right. So now from the side view, uh, I'm going to take this thing, I'm going to hit the R key, and I'm going to, holding the control key down and dragging on the Y manipulator, I'm going to scale this in proportionally in Y to get it about that thickness. Then I'm going to come in here and uh, right click and drag over to vertex. I'm going to grab these vertexes, I'm going to press the W to go to the move tool, and I'm going to pull the whole thing up to about there. Now, 
uh, to see the reference image, I'm going to come up here and click this icon and put everything in uh, uh, transparency mode. And you can see that I'm off a little bit, so I'm going to drag this over. Uh, or what I could do is come over here, take this out of reference mode, and drag this guy over a little bit. And just sort of eyeball it. Uh, actually, see, because we're getting some perspective distortion, I'm just going to sort of put it somewhere in the middle. And uh, you know, once again, we're getting perspective distortion, so you, you're not going to get perfect, but just get it close. Remember to put this back in reference so I can't select the image anymore. right? And if this is too light for you, you're still not being able to see the reference image properly, what you can... Uh, uh, well, no, that, that won't work. Never mind. I was going to say put it in wireframe, but you'll lose the reference image when you do that. So just uh, just go with this. <clears throat> so now let's see. What we want to do is we need to scale this in. So I need to add some edge loops. So I'm going to come in here, grab an edge. Holding the Shift key and the right mouse button, I'm going to go to Insert Edge Loop. Now to get to that from the Polygon menu, you'd have to be in Polygon mode. You'd have to go to Edit Mesh, and then you'd have to come down here to Insert Edge Loop. Okay, so you can see where this is a big time saver to just go shift right mouse button, uh, insert edge loop. And I'm going to click on the little box to bring its tool up just to make sure that I'm in uh, the default, which is relative. You can go equal distance. I usually use equal distance a lot so that it, it uh, I can control how close it is to an edge if I'm adding support edges. But relative is fine for this. And I'm going to throw an edge in right there. And I'm going to throw an edge in right here because you can see this is where this thing changes shape. Okay. So now with those edges thrown in, I'm just going to come in here and I'm going to grab these vertices, hit the R, and then uh, since this is on a plane, I can just scale it using this guy in general. But if you did want to scale it in only, say, the uh, X, Z plane, if you hold the Y manipulate, if you hold the control key down and then you scrub the Y, it will only scale it in the uh, uh, the plane that's perpendicular to Y, which is XZ. So we're scaling it in XZ. We get that shape. Select these vertices. Scale those in, as you can see, a little bit to like right here. And then grab these vertices and scale them in to right here. And, uh, and there you go. We're done. Thank you for watching the video. I hope you enjoyed this. No. <laughs> Let's add a little bit more detail, shall we? So there's the basic shape, as you can see. Once again, you click this icon to come out of uh, a shaded mode, and that's our basic shape. Now, this is actually made up of multiple parts. There's the cap, the globe, and the base. So let's actually split this up into, into those parts, shall we? So once again, let's go from the side view. Let's set it into uh, transparency mode. And so that we can split this thing up, let's add some... Uh, Let's add some edges in here, okay? Uh, now, I can see, looking at this, if I get a little closer, I could probably come in here and scale these in a little bit more. And I can scale these in a little bit more. Got the reference image. Might as well actually model to it, right? So grab these guys and just zoom in a little closer and scale those in. Now there's a, a rounding that happens here so you can't get it uh, uh, right on but we'll get it close and then come up here and scale these guys in a little bit more. Okay so that's closer to the to the shape that we're going for uh, for the globe and actually this cap sits outside the globe a little bit so I'm gonna actually bring these guys in a little more and I'm going to bring these guys in a little bit more. Okay, there we go. This globe actually sits inside the cap and inside the base. And you're going to see we're going to split this up into pieces so you can see how things get separated out. So there we go. That's the basic shape. Better. And then once again, holding the shift and the uh, right mouse button, we're going to insert some edge loops. I like to always go to tool mode just to see what mode I'm in here. And relative is fine for this. And we've got this cap, so we're going to need a, a split right here for the cap. And we're going to need a split down here for the base. 
right? And that's all we need, okay? So now what I'm going to do is I'm going to hold the, uh, go to object mode, uh, right mouse button and drag up to object mode. And that puts this guy back into the lines turn green, so we're in object mode. If this grid starts to become annoying, we're not actually modeling anything to the grid, so I can make it disappear by clicking on this icon right here. Okay, so I can show and hide the grid. So we'll get rid of the grid since that's distracting. And now what I want to do is I want to break this up into two, two parts, right? So the first thing is the globe I actually want to be uh, sort of larger uh, than all of this. So what I'm going to do uh, is take this whole thing and I'm going to hit Control D to duplicate it. And I'm going to drag it over here. Okay. I'm going to come back and pick on the original. And now I'm going to take and select all of these faces and delete them. So now I have the cap and the base. Now the globe portion, right, uh, I want to stay pretty much the shape that it is right here, but I don't need these faces. I don't need this edge here. I don't need this edge here. So, and by the way, I'm picking these edges by holding the shift key down and double clicking on the edge, and the shift key down and double clicking on the edge. And then to delete those edges, I don't want to just hit the delete key. I'm going to hold the shift, the right mouse button, and I'm going to select the delete edge. This deletes the edge as well as all the vertices. If you just hit delete, the delete key, and now I go to vertex mode and I select, you see all these hanging vertices that are left here. That's not good. If you do do that by mistake, you can either hit the Z key to go back or you can select just the vertices and then hit the delete key and that will get rid of the vertices. Now, <clears throat> I don't want my globe to go all the way down to the to the very, very base of this thing. So uh, what I'm going to do is I'm going to come in here and I'm going to insert an edge loop right here. And I don't want it to go all the way right up to the top of the cap, so I'm going to throw another edge loop in right here. Okay, and then now I can take uh, I can take these faces and I can get rid of those and those. Okay, so that's my globe done. All right, so now if I take this globe and I go to the channel box and I set it back to its origin. Oops. Z. I set it back to its X and Z. I don't want to change its position in Y. Right. And since I moved things around and didn't freeze the transforms before I moved it, they don't line up. So that's no big deal. We'll just eyeball it. All right, so let's just take this guy and move it back to here. It's not rocket science. Just got to be close. There we go. Okay. So perspective. So now I've got the base. I've got the globe and I've got the cap. Now the problem is the base is intersecting, or the globe is intersecting the base and the cap, right? So the first thing I'm going to do is take the globe itself, go to R, and just scale it in ever so slightly. Okay, so now it's slightly inside of the cap and the base. And then for the base, I need to give it some thickness for this base in the top. So the first thing I'm going to do is I want these to be separate objects. It's just going to make it easier for me uh, to manipulate them separately. So I'm going to select them. You can see when I select one, it selects both the cap and the base. So uh, and you know, just so I don't get confused or get things off again, I'm going to select everything while I'm thinking of it, and I'm going to hit Freeze Transforms, which is under uh, uh, Modify Freeze Transforms right here. And um, you see all these settings go to zero now. If I accidentally uh, pull something off, I can get it back to that spot by hitting zero, okay, which is what I was originally doing uh, the first time. So anyway, uh, let's do that. Uh, we're coming up on 15 minutes. Let me let me stop it right here, and in the next video, we'll start adding some detail to these bases and the globe, and we'll finish this up in the next uh, video so I don't have a long 20-minute uh, video going on here. I'll, uh, I'll stop it here, and we'll uh, pick it up in the next video, and we'll add some thickness to this, and we'll finish this uh, modeling of the uh, major components of the uh, lava lamp.